As you walk through Goa's lush landscapes and along Sarai's tranquil river, it is hard to imagine that beneath this natural beauty, a hidden crisis unfolds. The calm water and picturesque scenery tells one story, but beneath the surface lies a struggle. A struggle not just for the environment, but for the people whose livelihood depends on these precious natural resources. Goa's river, which have long been the lifeblood of its biodiversity and a source of livelihood for many, are now being exploited at an alarming rate. This isn't a problem that is easy to spot from one distance. The impact of illegal activities often remain hidden from the public eye, leaving lasting scars on the environment and the communities that depend on it. One such activities often overlook is illegal sand mining. Mining is a major threat to biodiversity in several states of India. It is very difficult for the government to control. It is handled by big mafias who ensure that it is one of the most risky issues to report on. Now the question arises, how do they not get caught? During the day, the boats are kept on the banks of the river, and once it is night, the men of the sand mafia start pumping sand out of the riverbed. There are some people who have reported these issues, but still, there is no strict action taken. Let us see a video on such case. I do not come here anymore as I am scared of them. I came here a few times and they came after me, hit me so I ran away in fear. So I do not come here now. I have seen them at night. There is no way to fight alone. Okay. Years near Uguem village in North Goa. He is showing me the place where his farm of several coconut trees once stood and eventually were all washed away one by one over the last decade. And then the sand mining started which has caused so much destruction. On this land during summers, I used to grow groundnut and during monsoon, I would grow paddy. My banana trees and coconut trees have been damaged. Has the government helped you? Nobody does anything. I don't feel like coming in this area. Authorities come and give assurances. But what will that bring? Will it fill my stomach? Will it give me my livelihood back? I, you saw in the video that many people's livelihood has been disrupted due to the illegal mining of sand. So now, let us watch a video about the expert opinion about the environmental changes which are being led due to the sand mining. Uh, there's a lot that happens when you extract sand uh, beyond sustainable limits. It's going to change your the, the course of your river, it's going to widen the channel, it's going to damage and we are paying a big price uh, in terms of uh, a loss of lotus species, a, a, a change in diversity, change in density, change in species composition and, and that's a big toll. If sand mining leads to significant loss of biodiversity adversely affecting both aquatic and riparian species. The destructive impact extends even to the mangrove forests as which can be noticed in the past years. While sand mining threatens the biodiversity of Goa's riverbeds, another issue lurks within its coastal waters. Plastic waste. Goa, known for its stunning beaches and thriving fishing industry, faces a silent crisis that goes beyond the picturesque landscape. The fishing industry, vital to the state's economy, accounts for about 2.5% of Goa's GDP. Yet, discarded fishing nets, often referred to as ghost nets, pose a significant threat to both marine life and fishing industries itself. This net continues to trap fish, turtles, and other marine species long after they have been abandoned, contributing to about 18% of marine litter on Goa's coast. For the fishermen, ghost nets destroy their equipment, making the problem deeply intertwined within their livelihoods. But amid the growing concern, a new hope is emerging. A collaborative initiative supported by the European Union and the local partners is empowering Goa's fishing communities to tackle this issue head-on. big threat both to the economy, to the environment 
and especially in our conversations through our pilot model which has been supported by the EU delegation by the uh, Goa State Pollution Control Board as well as by the Department of Fisheries we actually with our local implementing partners like Terry we actually went to the fishing communities to identify what is the local value chain that they have with the discarded fishing nets how often they discard the fishing nets and what is the solutions that they are looking at jale hum jo use karne ke baad jo kharab hota hai achhi tarah se rakhne ke liye kya hota hai aur dene ke liye jagah mangta hai jagah nahi hai na jo agar koi humko support karta hai jale rakhne ke liye to hum ek ke sath wo 300 400 kilo pe aisa kuch rakh ke ek ke baar mein bech sakta hai by collecting segregating and recycling discarded nets the fishing community is turning waste into opportunities the nets are sold to scrap dealers and transported to recycling facilities where they are transformed into high quality nylon eliminating the need for new raw materials and preventing further pollution of our oceans we are delighted to collaborate with this initiative that can collect fishing nets from goa and from india in fact we at aquafi we could potentially recycle them all but they have to be made with nylon six and make nylon as pure as the one coming from petrol and petrochemical resources but we don't take new resources from the planet and on top of that we avoid that fishing nets they are going to be landfilled or even worse to be thrown away into our oceans in villages like sida kakara and odel collection drive has become a common practice fishermen are now part of a movement that could set a precedent for the entire coastline of goa the local government the fishery department and the scrap workers have all come together in a collective effort to bring about sustainable change we want to take it forward to the entire coast of goa probably we have done on two three places and trial basis we have to get stakeholder like fisheries department we spoke with them and we'll try to get the space for the storing of this waste nest awareness drive to the other recipients and getting also this manufacturers or rather buyers of the waste nest together and it will become a movement of entire state and as a state we'll take this uh, entire process of going forward so we want to extend this project as a next phase of uh, covering entire goa for any uh, solution to be robust and sustainable it needs to be uh, built on collective action uh, and and collective action means that there needs to be fair and transparent benefit sharing for uh, people along the life cycle of the plastic even after it is discarded the really good initiative by collecting these old nets from our fellow fishermen this is going to help us keep our environment clean and plastic free this is not just a solution to plastic waste it's a blueprint for environmental and economic sustainability through this initiative go as proving that environmental responsibility doesn't just rest with the governments and corporations it starts with communities from empowering local fishermen to protecting marine biodiversity go as casting the net for a cleaner and greener future as we reflect on the environmental challenges go faces it becomes clear that these issues are intertwined with the well-being of both the land and its people illegal sand mining plastic waste and the fishing industry and the degradation of goa's natural resources present urgent threats that demand immediate actions however with collective effort from communities policy makers and regulatory bodies we can turn this tide sustainable solution like recycling discarded fishing nets show that progress is possible when innovation meets community actions illegal mining and plastic pollution represents more than just environmental concerns they threaten the livelihood cultural heritage and the future of goa protecting its fragile ecosystem its river beaches and forests is crucial for preserving the state's unique identity and ensuring a sustainable tomorrow for generations to come